brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Welcome to the How to Stay and Survive. The Coronavirus Plague Briefing Podcast, episode number 134. One episode number 134. My name is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, which is a worldwide evangelistic and discipleship ministry. The key word is repent, my brothers and my sisters, and those of you who are are not brothers and sisters because you have never believed in the Lord Jesus hint and the gospel or believe the gospel and repent believe in the Lord Jesus Christ believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved please in your Bibles if you will to 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 the Bible reads, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Dr. David Guzik said, this wonderful promise is in the context of God's promise to answer prayer from the temple which he chose to hollow with his presence. God promised something special to Israel when they did humble themselves and did pray and seek God's face. There is something naturally humble in true prayer because it recognizes that the answers are not in self. The answers are not in us, and they are rather in God. That shows humility, some humility at least. God promises something special to praying people. The phrase, my people who are called by my name. had its first application to the people of Israel as they lived in the land God promised to them. Nevertheless, the same God who made this promise to Israel still reigns in the heavens and will still respond to his humble praying people today. All the invitation is initially to, to the Israelites, my people. Second Chronicles chapter 6 verses 33 has made clear that anyone who acknowledges God's name and authority may pray with the same confidence. There's that word confidence again, which we're dealing with on Wednesday nights right now. The same confidence of a hearing. This passage is therefore consistent with others where the invitation is explicitly extended to all who call upon the name of the Lord 
this great promise of answered prayer in Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14 also includes the condition of repentance. As the people of God humble themselves, pray and seek the face of God, they must also turn from their wicked ways. They must also turn from their wicked ways. They must also turn from their wicked ways. And this is the part of the prayer, dear friends, that most of us don't want to deal with. We can handle the humbling ourselves a little bit. We can handle that pray thing. We can pray. We can see God's face, God's face because some of us don't even know what that means. But when we get to that point where God does not say repent. He says turn from their wicked ways. I want you to understand what I want you to do uh, as far as repentance is concerned. I want you to turn, not just your head to me and to Jerusalem and, and, and in your closet, but I want you to turn your life around and change your actions. See, this is where we have the problem, particularly in our day and time. We don't want to change our behavior. Oh, we, we don't mind changing our mind. We don't mind praying more. We don't mind even trying to humble ourselves down. Whatever, however we can do that. We don't mind seeking God's face and getting, trying to get closer to God. What we mind is turning from our wicked ways. See, one thing to say I'm sorry is one thing to share some tears about the evil you did. It's one thing to pray. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray right now. But it's, a, it's, another, it's another thing, dear friends, to change your behavior immediately. I saw this in action just this past week. I have a child who did something wrong, and uh, she's a very proud child as well, just like a mother. But she, she's, uh, I rebuked her for it. I have not uh, chastised her yet corporately for, uh, for it. As I was going to do. And one of the reasons why I have not. Is because she repented. No, no. Not just talking about it. Not just crying about it. Not just apologizing about it. She changed her behavior. Ever since then. It's been going on for some days. And I, I hope to God it, it, it stays that way. I hope she stays that way. I hope she makes it permanent. I see no need to whip her behind about the evil she did because she, she surprised me for the first time in her life. She repented. She, she turned from her wicked ways. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and she even did it today. She, she did what she was supposed to do today based upon my rebuke of her the other night. That's what God wants you to do, my dear friend. Stop the evil you're doing. It don't matter how you feel about it. it. Don't matter how you so you feel so justified in doing your wrong thing. If the authority figure over you says wrong, and God in this case God, you need to turn from your wicked behavior. See, that's what we that's what God wants to see, and guess what? That's what anybody in authority wants to see. Not just to talk, just none of that. Do <laughs> Turn around. Change. Now, is she perfect? No, she's not perfect. But on that particular thing, she repented. Immediately. And she fixed the problem. I, I, have, I have nothing else to say about it then. 
I don't have to keep talking about it. I don't have to chastise her. She, she, she got enough from that verbal rebuke to the point she, something was said in that verbal rebuke that made her understand this was against God, the evil she did. Not me. And she hurried up and repented and changed her behavior. I recommend you do the same. There are some of us who have pharaohistic style pride that we don't we don't do that. There are some grown folks who are that way. And that's what needs to happen. We you can you can say I'm sorry, I love you, or, please forgive me, all you want to, and cry and everything. That doesn't mean anything. If if you don't change behavior. And it doesn't mean anything to God, see. And this is where we have the problem. We, we, we okay with this entire prayer until we get to this point right here. Turn from your wicked ways. Yes, and make it permanent. See, that's what turn means now. We, we can't turn around back into it. No, no, no. We, we, we don't want you to go full circle. We want you to turn away from your wickedness and turn to good and stay that way. That's what repentance means. It wasn't enough, Dr. Guzzi goes on to say, to merely turn their heart to God, you know, uh, turn your face to God and all that. They must also turn their life to God, turn their behavior right. They must quit. And by the way, the greatest revival of all time is in the Bible. It's the Nehemiah Israel revival. Not not the, the, the Great Awakening one and the Great Awakening two in America no, no. and the revivals you don't read about in some book. The greatest revival in the history of the world was the Nehemiah Israel revival. Yes. Because it, it was based on the word and when the people heard the word they repented. They repented so much man they got rid of wives and all kinds of stuff. And Nehemiah, who didn't claim to be a preacher, he was just a cup bear, but he, he was something. People repented at the word. And that's what we need today. And right now, we're not doing that. That's why this plague is getting worse and worse. Now, I've already told you, I don't care what kind of vaccines come down the pike, it's not going to end the plague until we end it by humbling ourselves, praying in the church. I'm talking to, I'm talking to God's people now. God would end it if we humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. And repent and get back to our first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been honest with God. And he's the one who puts some of these things in my heart. And I've been honest with before God. And I've been honest, I'm being honest before you. I don't see us doing it. Doing that. I don't, I, don't see, I don't see it. I hope to God we do. I pray and hope. But I believe some preachers have been bought off by the homosexual cartel. I do. There's a, there's, a, there's a godfather of homosexuality in this country who puts up one leader and puts down another and tells them to, I want this right here to happen. And, uh, okay? and, and they have paid off major pastors. I believe this with all my heart. They've been paid off. They've been bought. The silence has been bought. And this is precisely what is destroying our country. And the sin that God is using, the sin that God 
is destroying destroying our country for and destroying the uh, uh, all of our prosperity that we used to have ultimately is a is a whole bunch of sins that led up to this sin this abomination and when a society gets to that point uh, where they got they done done everything under the sun now they got to turn men got to turn to men women and say god now you're messing you're trying to mess with god's world and trying to turn it upside down on his head and he's not going to let you do that because that's not even good for you so he would just rather just go ahead on and start stepping and and dealing with the situation at hand and that's what he's doing until we repent and uh, right now we're not repenting fast enough as you will see here in a few minutes things are getting worse and I'm talking to the people in the church I'm not talking to lost folks I, I'm going to talk to lost people by preaching the gospel to them which everybody in the church ought to be doing we're not even doing that we have not even repented of being disobedient to the great commandment and the great commission. Dr. Guzik continues, God simply promises to hear the prayer of his humble, prayerful, seeking, repentant people. He will bring forgiveness to his people and healing to their land if they do it and do it with the right heart and the right spirit. I'm talking to everybody here and I'm talking to everybody out there all over the world. <clears throat> and that's all. That's the only thing that's going to get it, people. You can get all the vaccines you want to. It's not going to stop this plague until we in the church do what God has told us to do. And to express the kind of repentance that is permanent, like I talked with you about earlier. Now, dear friends, as you know, we've been quoting the great modern-day prophet Leonard Ravenhill. He, uh, he's gone a little bit uh, deeper than what uh, uh, I've ever heard him go in this quote. Dr. Leonard Ravenhill said, were we half as hot, that is in a biblical sense, hot and cold, lukewarm, okay. so get, the, get your mind out the gutter. We're not talking about that. And we got too many hot people, hot, hot Christians in that right there. In the world in a sense. Okay. We don't need for you to be hot like that. We need for you to be hot for Jesus on fire. That's what he's talking about. Were we half as hot as we think we are and a tenth as powerful as we say we are, our Christians would be baptized in blood as well as in water and in fire. <clears throat> you know, you, you see me walking off? I'm really going to get some water, but uh, that's a drop the mic quote right there. <clears throat> that's, that's, that's just, I think that's as deep as the prophet in the Raven Hill has ever gone. All right, the briefing news. The briefing news, please pay close attention. According to the Charlotte Observer, 75 coronavirus cases have been linked to an event 
at First Baptist Church in Hendersonville, North Carolina. 75 cases. <clears throat> My point is sharing this with you. Regardless of who says what. I don't care what pastor tells you to come to the church building right now. People don't go to the church building, but go to church. Every church should be online now. Don't go to the church building, go to church. Make sure you go to church now, but don't go to the church building right now. People. As I shared with you last week, a great Christian doctor, he's the real deal. He is begging churches to shut down as far as uh, in-person services. until next September. I, and I know what some of you pass. I won't even have a church if I shut, if I, I shut down in-person services until next September. If, if, it's, if it's a church, uh, if it's the Lord's church, you have, it, it, the Lord will have a church. Now, if it's your church and everything depends on you and you think you're losing the feeling of the members because they don't see you in person every, every week, then that's your church. that's your church. That's not the Lord's church. See, the Lord's church is going to survive. I'm talking about local churches. Well, if it's the Lord's church locally, hear me well. Yes, universally, you know the, the church is going to survive universally. I'm talking about your local church will survive and do quite well without risking the lives of the sheep. Because if you tell them to, to come, many of them are going to come. Not only because you said so, but they're lonely too. They miss the, the fellowship too. They miss the church meeting, you know, uh, together. And, 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 and many people, uh, they use the church for many things besides spiritual Encouragement and spiritual goals. This is a social outlet for them. It's a business outlet. And all kinds of crazy things like that. And they miss all of that too. Sad to say, there's some people who try to come to church to get some loving from somebody they should not be trying to get loving from. That hug from Deacon Bo Pete. I know you don't like it, but that's what some people do. You got some women who won't hug their husband, but they'll, they'll hug Deacon Bo Peep or Pastor Bo Peep. And, and vice versa, and all kinds of weirdness going on. And, uh, and, and that's for the wrong reason. That's why God has shut down the church, because people are going to church not to worship Him, but for many other reasons. So this is a good time for people to get their hearts right. Now, your church may slim down to the faithful few, but the church will survive. And I'm talking about the local church. So go to church, and every God-called pastor, I believe, ought to be preaching every day. I said, my pastor works a job. No, he doesn't have a job right now. His job is to preach the gospel every day. He ought to be on Zoom. He ought to be on Facebook. He ought to be on whatever. YouTube, preaching every day. I don't care if there's five people coming. It don't make any difference. That don't, make, that don't mean anything. All it takes is one person to get saved. They may win a million see, to Christ. That's all it takes. According to the Bangor Daily News, seven cases have been linked to the Stetson Memorial United Methodist Church in Hatton, Maine, one of which led to the death of Lynn Blevins, the church, or rather the pastor's wife pastor's wife died from the coronavirus plague. As I have told you, people, you don't want this at all. You don't want this to get rid of it. 
You don't want this in your body at all. Okay, this is a different kind of virus. It's a plague. And it will take you out quickly. <clears throat> According to WAAY TV, Ashbury United Methodist Church in Madison, Alabama, has canceled in-person services over the holidays due to the increasing number of coronavirus cases that has local hospitals reaching capacity. According to News 4, Jacksonville pastor, I think this is Jacksonville, Florida pastor, Tom Barry of Neptune Baptist Church uh, in Neptune Beach, Florida, died after a month-long battle with the coronavirus plague. Okay? I repeat. And I know there's some pastors mad at me, and I love them all. One of my favorite pastors of all time, a true man of God, Dr. John MacArthur. I love him. And I still quote from him and use some of his stuff, his material, to, 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 to enhance my sermons. Because he's a gentleman and a scholar. made it very clear that he's wrong for doing what he's doing. Uh, don't go to church. Don't go, don't go to the church building, but go to church. Everything should be done online. Because this is too dangerous of a thing. People. Families have been absolutely devastated and destroyed by the coronavirus plague. Children have been left as orphans because of this in the church across the nation and around the globe and the other thing is as I've been saying this plague is against is against the church it's not, it's not and you need to be honest about that pastors and preachers stop lying stop trying to act like we are not at fault we are big time this nation is messed up because we in the church are messed up. Pastors with side pieces. Pastors' wives with side pieces. Pastors who are swinging with the deacons and swinging with the trustees. And justifying and saying it's keeping our, our marriage together. <clears throat> pastors and, and, and pastors' wives and churches... Supporting homosexuality and lesbianism. Letting lesbians and homosexuals be members of the church. And now all of a sudden we want to put out uh, the people who married a lost person. We want to put the lost person and the, and the, and the uh, Christian, the half-saved family, out of the church. But we got homosexuals holding hands in the church. No. See, see that's what Jesus calls straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. We become see the Pharisees and the gatekeepers and the uh, cemeterians. They begin to lose their minds when they they start doing that kind of thing. They're, they're, they're not. You shouldn't be doing that. We got we, we have people in the church who ought to be churched and ought to be put out of the church right now. We got folks married and remarried as members. Well, what are you going to do about them? They supposed to be both, both of them supposed to be saved. They ought to know better. No, they did it because they wanted to do it. They didn't have to do it. I know that's not popular. That's right. But don't, but don't say we're going to put out the half saved family and we got a, a homosexual family in the church as members. And we got a bunch of married, <clears throat> divorced, and remarried people. In the church. And they have no grounds for it. They just did it because they could. 
And they wanted to. They wanted something new. And some have been divorced and remarried two and three and four times. And they, they not only are they members, they own staff. They're in the pulpit. According to the Foray News, two coronavirus cases have been tied to St. Daniel's Catholic Church in Foray, uh, Colorado. I know of a, a man who, he and his wife and children, they did everything right. <clears throat> Pardon me. But the man, he got weak and he stopped by a restaurant. See, I have not been to a restaurant since the plague started back in early March. I have not been to my favorite restaurants that I passed by. In. I have not been to my barber, as you can tell. Because I, 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 God just put it in my heart and my spirit that this is serious. I don't want you doing that. But he did. He, this is an honest man, an honest brother. <clears throat> he, he was doing a. He, he said they were flat doing it, washing their hands. They had the hand sanitizer, and he was very careful at the restaurant. He did one thing. He said he didn't know. He didn't know that they had opened up the outside for people to eat. And he said there was a lot of people there. He said that he was just he just wanted that food so badly for him and his family, and he just went in there and and it took him a while to get the order and, and people were passing by and so forth. And before you know it, he had the coronavirus plague. He said it scared him. And this is a, a big old grown man. He said it scared him. He said it started with some pinching in his chest that he. He said it was not. He said he thought it might have been from working out, he said, but it was underneath the muscle. It was it was just like some hands pinching him real hard. And after about two or three days, he realized he went ahead and got tested. He realized he had it. <clears throat> and and he told he told he, he told and he gave that testimony so great. Uh, I mean, he ought to be a storyteller. I mean, he just just so sincere. And sometimes when you when you go on through something like that, you get serious real quick. <clears throat> he did a wonderful job telling us how it, this thing was getting to him. And uh, you don't want this, people. And you can get it very easily, very quickly, and not even know where you got it. He just happened to know because he. Ha he, he knew because that was the only place where he slipped up at, going to that restaurant. He had not been anyplace else. Now, according to the Cherokee One Feather News, six coronavirus cases have been confirmed within the old Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Cherokee, North Carolina. right here is more, more important. According to CBS News, eight nuns living at a retirement home for sisters in suburban Milwaukee died of the coronavirus complications in uh, the last week, including four who passed away on the same day. This thing does not play. And for those of you who believe that this is a hoax, I've already explained why you believe that. Um, I'm not going to get into it right now. But one thing about it, you you can't you can't you can't lie about a death. You can't make up deaths. Now either somebody is is dying or somebody lying.
It's not a hoax. According to Baptist Press, longtime pastor Rod Mastella of the Summer Grove Baptist Church in Shreveport, Louisiana, died from the coronavirus plague. According to Reuters, the coronavirus daily death toll crossed over 3,000 for the third day in a row. You cannot lie about 3,000 deaths. They can all be verified. And it's really more than that because these uh, news agencies, they do not record the deaths of people who are choosing to die at home. According to the Daily Mail News of Great Britain, the U.S. had its deadliest day of the plague pandemic so far, as nearly as over 3,700 people died in a 24-hour period, a record 113,000-plus were hospitalized on that same day, and over a quarter of a million more people were infected as vaccine shipments were held up across the country on that day, a few days ago. You can do as you please, but it's my job to warn you and uh, share with you that you can survive this plague and be able to live to tell the story, but you need to listen to the man of God and um, not go out here doing foolish things. <clears throat> Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. According to the Houston Chronicle, record numbers of coronavirus patients are pushing hospitals and staff to the limit. According to the San Francisco Gate News, California is reporting more coronavirus cases than most countries in the world. According to ABC News, ICU capacity has dropped to 0% in Southern California, in Los Angeles County alone, about two people are dying every hour on average from the coronavirus plague. According to NBC News, California activated its mass fatality program as Coronavirus cases and deaths continue to rise, leading to the state purchasing thousands of extra body bags. According to the Jerusalem Post, medical researchers are saying that even with the vaccine, global coronavirus herd immunity will take two to three years to achieve. Allow me to Repeat that in your hearing now. I want you to get this. This is very important. According to the Jerusalem Post News, medical researchers are saying that even with the vaccine or vaccines, global coronavirus herd immunity will take two or three years to achieve. According to CNN, Joe Biden's incoming White House senior advisor and director of the Office of Public Engagement, Cedric Richard, Richmond, tested positive for the coronavirus plague. According to the Statesman Journal, Oregon Governor Kate Brown has extended her state of emergency regarding the coronavirus to March the 3rd, 2021. 
According to the Associated Press, French President Emmanuel Macron has tested positive for the coronavirus plague. According to NBC News, one in five prisoners in the U.S. has had the coronavirus plague. Nearly 2,000 have died, according to the Daily Mail. Uh, nearly 2,000 have died. And I believe it's over that, of course. According to the Daily Mail, and, and I want you to get this, this is another important statement you need to understand. According to the Daily Mail News of Great Britain, an Oxford professor has warned that the coronavirus plague could mutate and render the vaccine useless and uh, fears that masks will be everyday part of life, will be an everyday part of life until at least the fall of 2021, if not more so. According to CBS News, as 2020 comes to an end, some of the first Americans to contract coronavirus are still experiencing side effects of the disease. Nine months later, medical officials call, this the, call these people the long haulers. According to the Associated Press, the number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits rose again last week to 885,000. And some believe that it's really over a million, but they, did, they just didn't want to, to print that. The highest weekly total since September as a resurgence of coronavirus cases threatens the economy, the economy's recovery from its springtime collapse. According to the Daily Mail of Great Britain, the coronavirus plague is the leading cause of death in America ahead of heart disease and cancer with daily tolls tripling in the last month. <clears throat> also, according to the Daily Mail, a second Alaska health care worker has experienced an, allerg an allergic reaction to Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine one day after another staff member at the same hospital went into anaphylactic shock. And also today, a woman who got her shot on television, got her shot and then she fainted. At the time of this briefing, I believe it is, uh, let me say it this way, at the time of the preparation of this briefing, I, I hope something took place over the last hour or so, but I doubt it. Because I've been telling you since March, do not depend upon the big GOV. Always depend upon the big G-O-D, God Almighty. But at the time of the preparation of this briefing, the U.S. government still has not come up with a package of any kind to help the American people who are facing no food, a lack of food, who are facing uh, complete uh, devastation, facing foreclosures and facing uh, being put out of their rentals, evictions, and so forth in a few days, right after Christmas. And also facing losing their uh, benefits, unemployment benefits. And by the way, the 800 plus thousand who just applied for unemployment, that's a whole new crop of people. 
It has nothing to do with the other millions who have already done so. Okay? So, um, th you, you can't live a fiction life in a non-fiction world. And, and, and I, I, I fear that because of our sinful nature and our flesh and because of, of, of a whole bunch of uh, fantasy movie and television watching America uh, has a deficit, a mental deficit, the American people on, hand, on handling reality. And I believe that that's one of the reasons why we have so many people who just refuse to accept this is happening to the great America. Number one, we're not great. We used to be great because we feared God in the church, in the family, and in the government, and in this country. We had more respect for God. But when you have the whole country, including the Supreme Court, supporting and sanctioning, including the church and the family, the three great institutions of God, sanctioning homosexuality and lesbianism, the sodomite uh, uh, agenda. Now you, 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 you're getting into trouble with God big time. We were already in trouble with our other sins. And then you want to add on this? God does not play that. And, and everybody who names the name of God, who knows God, they know that God does not play that. And so that's why we're in this mess. And that's why supposedly the richest, mightiest, greatest country in the world is suffering the most. We're leading in the suffering and in the pain and in the deaths. How can that be? Not, not a country in Africa, not a country in Europe, but America. Not a country in, not even China. Uh, not a country in Asia, but America. Why is that? Because God is punishing America. Especially the church, first and foremost. And we got folks in the church who don't want to acknowledge the evil that we have done. And that's why things are going to get worse. And that's why things are getting worse. Over 3,000 people dying a day in America during the month of Christmas. And yet we want to try to act like we're going to dance and sing on the, dog, on the Titanic. While the Titanic is sinking, it's, it's like this. Okay? If we don't repent in the church in a hurry, it's never going to go back level. It's going to go right on up and sink on down. People, don't, don't, don't play with God. Don't mess with God. It's rough right now. And it's going to get even worse as time goes on if we don't hurry up and repent in the church, first and foremost, in America. I say in the, the church in America because we influence the whole world. Sad to say. All right, for those of you who need food, For those of you who need food for your family, in case you don't know where to go, I'm going to give you some information. Feeding America. FeedingAmerica.org. Telephone number 800-771-2303. Don't be ashamed. Humble yourself and go get the food. Call them and they will tell you where to go in your town. Action Against Hunger, actionagainsthunger.org. So 
Telephone number 212-967-7800. Write it down, 212-967-7800. And uh, write all of these numbers down in case uh, the pantry in your area is out of food, jam-packed, or whatever. And uh, if you have lost your transportation, they have ways of getting food to you. Ask for the help. Don't be embarrassed. Make sure you and your family can eat. Food for the Hungry, FH.org. Food for the Hungry, FH.org. Telephone number 800 248 6437. Telephone number 800 248-6437. Now those of you who are being evicted, you have received a notification of eviction or foreclosure. Um, I've been warning you about this since March. And, uh, and some of you, many of you have been trying to hold on to your place. Because this is the first house you ever owned, or best place you ever lived, and so forth and so on. Uh, but sometimes in life you have to downsize and you have to let go of stuff and go on with your life. And I've been you for, for since March about some alternative housing situations for you and your family. It may be harder for you now to do this. July, God, back then, I wanted you to do it back then. They would have been more welcoming and they would have helped you more. Now we come into a point where the moratoriums are going to be, if this government does not do something real quick, the deadline is tonight at 12 o'clock, I think. But let, let me just hip you as to what's happening with your government. They know they don't have the money. They want you to believe that we are all powerful and we're all rich and all of that. They know they don't have the money and countries out there who were loaning to us, they have told them don't 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 go into any more debt now. You already owe us trillions on top of trillions. You can't even pay that. The people we owe money to, they're telling, they're telling, and they have already told our government, don't, don't, don't go into a whole lot of debt now. Don't, 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 don't go in, don't go further in debt, because you don't have any money. You're broke. That's why they're very hesitant. That's why they're playing games. They want to act like they're doing something, and then they want to go home and. Live in their little palace houses, and you, you're going to be out there suffering and hurting. And see, if they could have done something, they would have done it already. And don't, don't be deluded, don't be fooled, don't be bamboozled. Even if they say something tonight, which I, I hope they do. I hope they do something for the people. One thing I hope they don't do is send a $600 check like that. Roll that into something else that can help me. Don't 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 send a six hundred dollar check to people. That's that's an insult. That's an insult. Keep that and put that into something else. But because and I say that because that's what they're bouncing around, you know. And so uh, now, so even if they say something at the last minute tonight. Do not put your heart on that. Do not put your confidence in that. Because the predators of this nation have already put America on notice. You already owe us trillions. We don't want to have to foreclose on you. Don't, don't, do, don't do that. I, I, but our people are hurting. We know that. But we can't carry this debt like this, not knowing when you're going to recover. 
And, and here's what they're saying to people uh, 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 too afraid to say sometimes. They're saying something that I've been saying since March. We as Americans, and I know you don't like to hear, uh, hear me say it, we used to be more disciplined and we used to be able to take stuff and sacrifice and discipline, you know, and be more disciplined. That's not the America we have right now. We can't take that much. That's why we, you know, we got people marching about closing down this and that and the other. We can't take being shut in the house with the family and uh, so forth and so on, homeschooling and home child and, 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 you know. And I've already told you the solution. Uh, all of the major companies of the world ought to just hire everybody in, in the country and everybody do something for their company, their company. With training and with supervision, do Zoom and all that kind of thing. It can easily be solved, but they don't want to do that. And, uh, and, and uh, the uh, President Trump didn't want to do it. He wanted to keep the old thing going. But sometimes in life, when you're, 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 you're presented with different facts, you need to change. And if he had changed, he would still be president going into this next term. But he didn't even do that. I told him to do that, and he didn't listen. I told his advisors to tell him, and they didn't listen, evidently. And now he's in a mess. And the country is in a mess. And we're going into a greater mess, sad to say. But this could have been handled a whole lot better and easier. Uh, and, 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 uh, could have been handled easily, rather, if we had, were willing to change. So I want you to understand that's what's happening. That's the reason why you didn't get a you didn't get a deal from the government. You didn't get any relief from the government before the election. If there was ever a time to get some relief, it would have been before the election. They didn't have the money. They don't have the money. And the, and the, and the credit holders, the creditors, they are saying, don't, um, you know, we can't borrow, we can't, we, can't, we can't loan you that. So that's why I say to you, even if they say something tonight, uh, tomorrow, or whenever, don't put your confidence in that. I've been trying to tell you that this year, the whole year. Don't put your faith in them. Put your faith in God. And stop thinking of innovative ways and praying and asking God to give you new ideas on how to survive. And if uh, you own a house and you, and you have received some notifications for foreclosure, you need to sell that house as best you can, as quickly as you can, to an investor, somebody, get the um, equity, Stop worrying about trying to be, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and all that, trying to be cute. This is not a time to be cute. You're going to be out on the street. Take that $38,000 or that $65,000.66 equity and buy. Here, I'm getting ready to tell you what to buy. I'm not interested in you going into debt further. You need to buy something. It's going to be way less than what you got right now. Or you need to get into something that you can easily pay and be able to go to the grocery store and get your own food that you're used to eating instead of getting a box, standing in a, a line, uh, stand, you know, in a car all day long for a box of food which won't last a day in many cases. If you have to do that, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm trying to help you, you know, and it, but see, you got to sell. You got to get out of where you are. If you are going to a food bank for food and you're living in a big fine house on Pork Chop Hill and you're driving a, a, a car that costs $400 a month, you got to let that go to survive this. Because this may last seven years people. 
And no president can save you from that. Nobody. You need God. And you need to listen to the man of God. I'm trying to help you now because God told me that this was going to happen. I was warning you folks for 10, 12 years. And God led me to do some things before the plague came. And by the grace of God, we have not missed a beat. So listen to what I'm telling you now. Here's some alternative housing. You're going to have to downsize. You're going to have to humble yourself. But before I deal with the alternative housing, here's why I uh, here's why you need to listen. Second, Tim, Second Kings chapter eight verses one and two says, "Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life." saying, Arise, and go thou in thine household, and sojourn, wheresoever thou canst sojourn. You see, this is what I've told you from March. I thank God that my children obeyed me. I told them to get out of the apartment and move into a house and get away from a whole bunch of people. And my children obeyed me, and God has blessed them, and they did that. I want you to listen. You need to get, if you are in a, an apartment or a townhouse, whatever, you need to get out of that. Because this thing is going to mutate and, and it's going to start coming. You people don't repent. It's going to start coming into your bedroom and getting you. You don't have to be around anybody else. So listen to what I'm telling you now. You do, I, know, I know it sounds crazy because, you know, that sounds crazy. Man, we live in America, man. See, see. Everything sounded crazy from the prophets in when the prophets spoke. That's why the kings and everybody else wanted the prophets dead. You're talking crazy. Uh, 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 Babylon is not going to destroy us. Get out of here. Put him in jail. Put him in the, in the dungeon. Thou canst surge on. Go somewhere. For the Lord hath called for a famine. The Lord called for the plague. Okay? This plague comes from the Lord. The Lord is in control of everything. You used to believe that. Do you believe that now? By the way, all the warnings he sent, all the hurricanes and tornadoes he sent to warn us that I told you all about, and this is just a warning, you know, the fires and all that, God was warning us, and we didn't take heed. All that came from the Lord. God is in control. And it shall also come upon the land seven years. This plague may last seven years or more. See, one thing I know about God is that when he begins to chastise, it's not like, you know, parents living today, you know, chastise, chastise their children like a little slap on you. It's going to be a it's going to be a sure enough whipping. And it's, it, here's the thing about God's whippings, they last a long time. God is very thorough. Oh yes, <laughs> this is why I don't mess with God. I don't mess with God, and I, I would encourage you not to mess with Him because see, He's very merciful, very loving, very gracious. But now, if you don't, if you persist in your evil, and you think you can play with God like that. Once he gets on you, it's going to be a while. You can pray. You can ask for forgiveness. You can cry. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a while before he gets up off of you. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. See, that's why I don't believe this plague is going to end anytime soon. Because we're not acting right in the church. I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about the homosexuals. I'm talking about the church sanctioning the abominations of homosexuality and lesbianism and adultery and fornication and uh, uh, divorce and remarriage and everything else. <clears throat> and the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God and she went with her household 
and surge on in the land of the Philistines seven years. Okay, so what I'm telling you to do is you need to move. I'm telling you the same thing in these modern times. You cannot live, unless you are rich, and you have investments, and you have millions of dollars in the, in the bank and so forth, if you live for paycheck to paycheck, you need to move. And that's most of you. You're going to have the downsides. You need to go ahead and accept it. Stop putting your trust in the, in the government and put your trust in God and humble yourself down. Sell all your stuff and move into something you can afford until the storm passes over. First alternative. You can buy off-grid housing from farmflip.com that's out in the country. You're not going to be connected to the city. Less coronavirus plague. Farmflip was created and is managed by former land brokers and features one of the largest sources of land listings, land buyers, and uh, land professionals from across the nation. Did you get that uh, website? What is it? Farm Flip what? Farm Flip what? Farm Flip what? I want to make sure they, they, they got it. Farmflip.com. Farmflip.com. Move on out into the country and get away from the plague and uh, protect your family. Second alternative, you can buy mobile homes. You say, me buy a trailer? I was raised in a trailer. That's all right. That's all right. You may have to raise your children in a trailer for right now. Buy yourself a, and by the way, now I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to rent, rent nothing. I know that's bad English. I'm trying to help you. I'm not encouraging you to, to rent nothing because the whole this whole country may go bankrupt and everything goes down the drain. See? And 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 your rent's gonna go real real high and you won't be able to pay it. I want you to own something. I don't care if you gotta buy a used trailer. I don't care if you have to buy a, 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 a not a double wide, but a single wide. I know you want a double wide. If you got to buy a trailer, I know you want a double wide. Get it if you can. But if you can't afford a, a double wide, get a single wide. And if you can't afford a new one, get a used one. Get something that you own. It's something that you own, man, woman, that nobody can take away from you because it's, it's, uh, this thing can easily get worse, and I believe it is. I'm not going to give you the reason why right now. Some of you already know why I believe it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. You're going to find out this was not just Trump. You're going to find out, my dear friends. Not just Trump and his failures. You want to find out, my dear friends, it's, it's, it's the sin of the church. The sins of the church which are being exposed more and more, even in the plague. Sins in the church. Sins in the family, sins in the government. They're bringing down this nation. So, I want you to sell your big fine house on Pork Chop Hill. Sell it back to the people you, you're buying it from if you need to. And, and negotiate a great uh, uh, equity as best you can at this late date. 
They would have given you more back in March and April and May and June when I was telling you this. But uh, you didn't think it was going to last this long. I know you didn't.